Myanmar's military has dissolved nearly half of the country's 90 political parties, including Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy. And this is despite earlier remarks by the army that it had no plans to do that to the NLD. But earlier this year, it announced the parties would have to re-register under new strict rules. And those that failed to do so within two months were warned that they would be disbanded. Myanmar authorities have vowed to hold polls but haven't been forthcoming with the details. The country's shadow national uni unity government says that the military has no power to hold what it calls a sham election. The NUG adds that political parties didn't re-register under the new rules because they respected the wishes of the people. For more, CNA's Leon Waikit joins us. He's live in Kuala Lumpur. Waikit, this move to prolong the military governments, it's going to prolong that grip on power. The risk of violence in the days to come, how high is that risk now? I would say quite high, even without the Myanmar army's latest move to dissolve political parties. Violence is a feature in, in Myanmar these days. We've not seen violence dwindling. Uh, but it is fair to say that the Myanmar army is using these tactics to hold on to power for as long as possible. And I say this because of this context. Now, of the 90 political parties, there are some 50 parties that have not been dissolved. Add to that figure, there are 13 new parties that have been established. So that's 63 out of 90 parties, or about 70% of the parties that have not been dissolved. But don't let that figure fool you, because of these figures, only 12 parties will be eligible to contest in the elections countrywide. Even then, these parties have even more hurdles to overcome in the, couple, uh, in, in the coming months, including having to prove that they have enough supporters, enough funds and enough officers across the country. So you'll be expecting perhaps that these numbers will dwindle even further with these obstacles. Having said that, observers point out that these new rules are just cosmetic changes because these parties that have emerged uh, to re-register themselves are either pro-army or army-friendly parties. And those that truly matter, such as the National League for Democracy Party, have not registered themselves. Well, that field has been narrowed down dramatically, Waikid, but the army says it's still going to hold those elections. Uh, and it's also going to you know, cause a sense of crisis, perhaps, in Myanmar. A uh, few, if, en if any, powers have been able to influence the actions of this military. Uh, ASEAN hasn't been able to, to do that either. Will the international community simply have no other choice other than to recognise whoever wins this election uh, that many believe won't even be free or fair? Yeah, exactly. And that's the concern of the international community, including ASEAN, that they'll be forced to recognise the Myanmar army if they do win these so-called elections. And this is why the ministers, diplomats and officials I've been speaking to, they choose to focus on the now, the present. Their position is... Elections are not what the Myanmar people want. As you said earlier, Don, it's not going to be free and fair and elections are going to cause further violence. But even if the day comes when the Myanmar army does hold elections, they're going to have problems finding people logistical support to hold the elections because it is a known fact that supporters of the army, in this case perhaps the civil servants or some of the soldiers, uh, if, even if they come out to become electoral officers, it is a known fact that resistance forces have killed or targeted these army supporters. So all in, it might still be difficult to hold elections even if the uh, Myanmar army were willing to do that. Waikit, thank you for that. Leon Waikit, they're speaking to us live from Kuala Lumpur.